Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus today. My name is Trace. This is a podcast style show, so we're going to take a big topic and break it into five different chunks for you. And this week we are talking about one of my favorite topics, the history of science. So far we've explained how science started and what science is. If you haven't watched those, make sure you do. But let's get into some of the roadblocks that science has run into since it first started. You know, science is not perfect, and people tend to mistrust it. There are people that would call this the war on science. I don't know how I feel about that term, but it is a term that's thrown around. Science has a war on it. I mean, it's a sustained state of competition, conflict, hostility between different people or groups. That's the definition of war. It sounds a lot like people attacking science, and people are definitely hostile against it. And I know you're probably already thinking of who I might be discussing, and that's the religion versus science debate. I think that debate is actually bull. It's not really a debate. It's only a debate now because we need to have something to yell at each other about on cable television. But in reality, scientists were often and still are people of many different faiths. The ancient Greeks were some of the first people to like look at science and religion and kind of equate the two, start to think about religion in a more scientific way. Science is a process. You're trying to understand the natural laws behind creation. So if you think about it from a religious perspective, science is really just trying to know God better. They wanted to know God's creation. If, if, if God created everything, and everything is mathematically perfect, duh, because God created it, then with logic and reasoning, we should be able to discern the mind of the gods. We should be able to know God's creation better using science. In the ninth century, there were houses of learning in cities across the Islamic world because Islamic science was part of the will of Allah. They wanted to better themselves and not just physically, you know, it's not just exercise, it's also mental fitness. You wanted to make sure that you would understand the world around you, understand creation. And even into the early 12th century, Christianity and science were not, were not at odds. They weren't battling. And that's just after the dark ages. So you would think that if they were going to fight, it would be right then. But many of the prominent scientists from that time period were also religious. So then in the 14th century, bum, 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 things started getting pretty serious. Uh, Christian beliefs started stating that the Bible should be read literally. And challenging that view was heresy. And taking that all the way to the bank was the Catholic Church of Rome. The Catholic Church of Rome started prosecuting or persecuting or basically putting people in prison and torturing them for denying the literal truth of the holy texts. And that's when science got in trouble. So for example, 1543, Copernicus put the sun in the middle of the universe. And fortunately for him, I guess, he died before persecution came down upon him. His book wasn't widely disseminated while he was alive. Unfortunately, Giordano Bruno, who you may remember from the Cosmos show, he was burned at the stake. And all he did to get burned was to say the Bible wasn't literally right in this one little bit, and that is that the sun might be at the center of the universe and not the earth. All of these scientists, funnily enough, knew enough about the political environment at the time to not say the sun is at the center and we are correct. Also, that's not very sciencey. Instead, they say, I think the sun may be at the center of the universe, and then the Catholic Church comes in and says, that's heresy, we're going to burn you. And so they burned him at the stake. Galileo, about 70, 80 years later, in the early 1600s, he came along, and with his observations of our planets and the way our solar system moved, he thought the sun might be at the middle of the solar system. Maybe not the universe, but the solar system. It's called heliocentrism. He was also then tried by the Inquisition. Not so great, didn't work out very well for Galileo. During the early Renaissance period, the Catholic Church of Rome came up on the scene, and this is when things got pretty real. And the problem being, though, that science was still a big part of religion. And as I mentioned earlier, many of these men and women who were practicing this repeatable experimentation were people of faith. They weren't trying to hurt religion. They weren't trying to harm it or take it down a peg. What they were trying to do is find out 
how God created these things or how and why God made the birds the way they did or put the sun where he did. And that's, I think that's pretty admirable, whether you agree with their religious beliefs or not. Today, we get a lot more of this because we just live in a more polarized, information-saturated culture. Uh, people are denying global warming. They're fighting about stem cells and what that means and what the beginning of life is, which is a very contentious debate. They're talking about uh, genetically modified organisms, which is just insane to even think about if you were talking about Galileo two breaths ago, and now we're talking about modifying DNA and whether that's life. That actually shows a lot of promise. It means that people understand science more than they thought they did. They still don't necessarily agree with all of its uh, pieces. There's also space travel and vaccines and all sorts of things that people are fighting about. And there's a question that we, myself, and our research team put up, and maybe it's just human instinct to think these things. You know, Scientific thinking has to be taught, says Marcia McNutt. She's the editor of the journal Science, pretty big journal, use it a lot. And sometimes it's not taught well, she says. Students come away thinking of science as a collection of facts and not as a method, which to expand on that essentially, that you just have rote memorization instead of understanding that science isn't in itself an answer. It's just a method to find an answer, right? Beliefs are influenced by our emotions. They're part of who we are as an emotional being. But it's not about rationalization. You don't want to rationalize too much when it comes to faith. It causes problems. And humans aren't really great with dealing with that cognitive dissonance, the idea that we have to think about two different ideas at the same time, that rationalization is important, but so is understanding that you can't answer every question. And uh, our brain is looking for patterns all the time. So often we'll fall into the trap of too much faith or too much rationalization. It's very difficult. Remember, though, that science was invented to take observation that was subjective and take humans out of the equation, literally take us out of it so that we could be as objective as possible. Faith is sort of the opposite of that. We want to put as much human in as we can. Faith is a very human idea. And so science does feel cold to a lot of people, which brings us back to this human instinct. Is it instinctual to trust faith over science? Because you can feel faith. We can't really feel science in the same way, argue some people. And in the end, I think, our knowledge of science is kind of hurting science. Like, fake-sounding science, using science words to explain things that aren't science, hurts science. Let me explain. There's a group called the Institute for Creation Research, and they use scientific language to tout Bible truths. So they name things like intelligent design, which is to say creation. We've called it creation since forever, but now we're calling it intelligent design because people understand science. People have a baseline of what their scientific knowledge and understanding is. So if we call it intelligent design, it sounds scientific, even if it's not. There's also the young earth hypothesis, or the idea that the earth is 6,000 years old and fossils were placed there, and everything we know about carbon dating and the history of the universe and the speed of light, all of that is wrong because the earth is only 6,000 years old. But rather than calling that part of our faith, it's an attempt to pass it off as science. So it's almost as if, by understanding science, we're using that language to talk about something that's not science, and people are tricked into believing it. So science is hurting itself, almost, by becoming more popular, or people becoming more literate in it. There's also problems with like politics, but we don't even need to get into that. That's a whole other <laughs> set of videos. So if you want to talk about that stuff, go down in the comments and let's fight it out down there. But make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. We're going to talk about this for a couple more days. And uh, I had a lot of fun researching all of these episodes, so I'll be down in the comments talking to you about it too. And make sure you check out our earlier episodes on the history of science and how we got to this spot and what science is in the first place. Thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.